Good morning, guys. I honestly haven't recorded any clips for the vlog, like me sitting down and talking to you guys, and I think over a week at this point. Yeah, I got my new computer last Wednesday, and I spent at least a couple days getting that all figured out, set up. Um, I also gave my previous computer to my husband, so getting that wiped and set up for him, so that was a whole extra process. And I'm still in the process of trying to wipe his you know, get his old PC set up because we're going to try to sell that. So it's just, it's been a very busy week, but I've also just sort of, I feel like I've gone into a black hole, to be honest with you. I feel very weird. I feel very off. My anxiety and stuff has sort of gotten the better of me this last week. A lot of it was centered around my computer because I don't honestly know why I was so freaking anxious about this computer. I think just because I was hearing a lot of horror stories about how these things go and um, I can definitely say I let my anxiety about all that get the better of me. So like once I felt somewhat calm about all that, then I just sort of got into a weird headspace where it's like, I'm really pushing myself to try and do some things like Uber Eats and I discovered this app called Rover where you can do pet sitting and stuff. I, I heard of it from a friend who also has a friend that does it and was making pretty decent money doing it and like certainly not like full-time job type money but i'm not really looking for that either i'm just looking for a little bit of money you know i've been pushing myself to try and get these things set up and to try and do them but my anxiety is just like totally gripping me actually go through and do them like i'm so scared to meet a person that i might be pet sitting for it just seems so ideal that i would get to spend time like as a profession, literally just hanging out with animals because it's not like when you're in the veterinary field where you're dealing with a lot of sick animals, dying animals, you know, a lot more sad stuff. This has almost no downside, you know, as far as that goes. So it seems so perfect. And like, that's why my friend recommended it to me because he also thought it was perfect for me. And I'm just, I'm, I'm paralyzed because I'm anxious about how this might go. I'm anxious to try something new and it's so frustrating. I'm like, I'm annoyed with myself. But then I, you know, the thought also goes through my head of like, you gotta be gentle with yourself. You have time. If you need a little more time to ramp up and prepare to do this kind of stuff, then so be it, you know, take the time. But it's also like, come on, my, you know? <laughs> At least that's, that's how I'm feeling right now about it. <sighs> That's where I've been for the last week, is sort of in avoidance, distraction territory of these things that are making me very anxious. It's weird. I don't really have a conclusion. I want to just indulge in distractions and like dopamine hits as far as like playing video games and just basically wasting my life away all day. <laughs> But at least I'm working on, in the process of doing that, I'm working on making content for you guys for spooky season. Um, I love this time of year. I'm so excited to be doing it. It honestly was a last minute decision to even do more thematic content for this month. It was really like, I decided it over this last weekend. And then Caleb and I worked on the graphics for my channel to get them a little bit more spooky. And yeah, so. It's really exciting, I'm excited. You guys, I got my new PC. That's it, over there in the corner. And I've been working on transferring things over, you know? And this is the state of my room. And I don't, I don't even, I, I can't, overwhelmed, too much clutter. Isn't this 100% better? <laughs> Like, it's not perfect, you know, but goodness gracious, that was like, that was really getting to me. This is so much better. <laughs> What's up, guys? I am having lunch right now. Tempting to. This is last night's leftovers. It's like a tomato ravioli and squash and cheese and 
It's really good. So I returned to therapy yesterday, which is definitely a good thing. Something I'm having a hard time with is identifying what next to target for EMDR as far as reprocessing trauma, because I have a hard time connecting to those memories in the sense that when I think of them, I don't feel them. But obviously I'm aware that those memories and those things I've been through influence how I act and behave and deal with things today. That's why I'm going to therapy because I don't like how I deal with a lot of things and I think I could be happier. I'm not good at identifying like those things in the moment. I'm not good at connecting what I'm feeling on a day-to-day -day basis to where it might be coming from. You know, like what original trauma is influencing me to react and behave a certain type of way, you know? And so she has tasked me with really sitting with and de like delving into every single feeling I have on a day-to-day -day basis instead of just the ones that are negative that I can't escape, if that makes sense. Because generally when I really dwell, I don't like the word dwell, but when I really focus on a negative feeling or, or anything that's bothering me, it's because it's bothering me. It's because I can't escape it. It's sticking around. So I know I need to marinate on it and think about it and figure it out. But there's a whole wealth of other negative emotions that pop up on a day-to-day -day basis that I have figured out an easy way to just like kick to the curb, you know, and not deal with. And those are the ones that probably compound, you know, have more influence over me than I realize. So what I'm trying to do today, I'm not feeling great today. I'm not feeling especially bad either though. Like that's that thing. It's like, I don't feel something isn't like specifically weighing heavily on me. I just feel kind of meh. So I'm, I'm exercising the way she told me to digging into that meh. I'm gonna share it with y'all. <laughs> I think I'm essentially having a you ain't shit type of day where I'm going about my day pretty normally. I'm getting things done. I'm not getting some things done. That's always the case, right? But there's an overall tone of whatever you aren't, you're nothing special kind of coloring in my head, if that makes sense. There's that overall tone of like, okay, good for you. You, you recorded a video today, good job. Now you better get it edited because it's gotta go up tomorrow, so get it together. Can you do that? <laughs> That's the kind of mindset I'm in. And like when I have days like this, it generally just makes me very agitated. Um, I'm easily irritable. I don't take a lot of joy in things when I'm having a day like this. I haven't tried it today, but I think even if I were to like go somewhere really, really nice, like go to my favorite restaurant and stuff like that, that's the stuff that I identify as being very pleasurable for me because in general food is like ple universally pleasurable to me, like good food, regardless of what mood I'm in. But honestly, that fact is dwindling. It's something I've noticed over the last month and a half or so now that I haven't been working because I 100% used food as a coping mechanism for my stress. And now that I don't have that daily stress of my workload, I go days without eating. <laughs> or like, all I eat is like a cosmic brownie. I think I mentioned this in my last video. Yeah, I definitely did la mention this in my last vlog, so I won't repeat myself, but I've noticed that I'm not using food as a coping mechanism anymore because I have other distractions to use. Obviously, that's not very healthy. I gained a little bit of weight for, from it, which also made me feel very crappy about myself because I hope I don't trigger any of you guys with this, but I definitely have some issues with weight and body image, probably a little bit of body dysmorphia. My dad growing up was like very hateful towards overweight people. My mother gained a lot of weight, I guess, in the time of their marriage, which was about 10 years and they divorced when I was about eight or nine. He was very critical of her about that and then like, I think he was trying to ensure that I didn't pick up her habits, right? Because he didn't like overweight people. He thought it was a sign of laziness and lack of discipline and ugly, you know? He would say things like, I think they were halfway facetiously, but 
they came out of his mouth all the time nonetheless. I don't even know if I should say these things on YouTube, honestly. Let me just put it as they were extraordinarily hateful. About the worst things that you could think of that people have used to demean and degrade and dehumanize fat people, my dad has done and said repeatedly throughout my whole life. So obviously I have a complex about my weight. <laughs> Plus, I mean, you know, my dad was really hypercritical and about a million other ways. When I was really young, I took a big interest in, I mentioned to y'all, piano. I played piano and I also did dancing. Um, I did Irish dancing. I really loved both those things, but um, my dad made me really terrified of them. I would, I would get punished pretty severely if I messed up when I was playing piano or dancing. I don't remember a lot of the punishments around piano, to be honest with you. The only thing that really sticks out in my mind about the piano was, uh, I think it was one of the most like significant steps I had made in piano where I was like doing a recital and I was doing like a solo performance in front of a lot of people. I just remember I wanted, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> I wanted to make him proud. I think we all want to make our parents proud. When I was little, I, I adored and idolized my dad. Probably until I was about 12 or 13 years old, I, he could do no wrong. He was a god among men in my eyes. Literally, I, like he could do no wrong. I, I felt that anything that happened to me that was cruelty from him was my own doing. I didn't really start to realize that that wasn't the case until I was like 13 or so. Because of therapy, thank God. I was trying really hard, but I was really nervous. I think it was one of the first times I'd ever performed in front of that many people. And I was performing in front of my dad and I wanted so badly to do well. And I did make a mistake when I was playing, but it wasn't a major one. It was like a slight slip of a note. And I corrected and I kept going. And I finished my piece and I remember there was applause. When I got in the car on the way home with my mom and my dad, I think if I'm, I don't remember very well the details. I genuinely don't, but I remember that he complained about me making a mistake the whole way home. Like he was angry that I, I was practicing every single day. He made me practice every single day for at least 30 minutes and it was 30 minutes of piano and then at least 30 minutes to an hour of dancing. So in total, like one, one and a half to two hours of practice in total every day. And I was like seven or so at this time, I think. All I took from that was that mm, trying my best was not enough. And furthermore, when I would dance, and here I am, I can feel it, I'm detaching from this. So I'm like fighting myself to stay emotionally connected to it. But when I would dance and he would watch me, he would yell at me and sometimes hit my legs when I messed up. The thing that I can remember like feeling the most out of all of that is just complete terror at the idea of, have, of practicing um, because I knew he'd be watching me. I, I didn't have a problem with practicing. I had a problem with him observing me and I would beg my mom to practice with me instead of him. A lot of the time she would, but sometimes she couldn't for whatever reason. I don't remember why, but I know there was just a lot of times that I felt my mom wasn't protecting me back then because I sensed that my mother was the gentler soul. Like my mom wasn't hurting me like my dad was. But when I reached to her for help, I felt like I almost never got it. Um, and the reality is that she knew with my dad that if she wanted to stop his behavior at all, she could not argue with him or whatever in front of me because it would make him worse. He would get angrier and then I would suffer for it. He would be harsher to me. I understand that now, but my visibility as a child was just that she wouldn't help me and I couldn't depend on her. And that created a humongous rift between us for most of my life. I think my mom and I have the closest thing to a healthy relationship now within the last six-ish years than at any other point in my life. And I'm 26. 
So like I, I can honestly say that for a long part of my life and especially my adolescence, I truly felt in my heart that I hated my mother. I know how harsh that sounds, and I know a lot of teenagers say I hate my parents, but I, I mean it. I, I very much resented her and I felt guilty about it at the same time because I knew I was supposed to love her, but I didn't feel like I loved her. I did though, I, I did, but I didn't feel like I did. And I've also come to learn in adulthood that my dad essentially intentionally ruined our chances of bonding in child, like in infanthood. And like, obviously I don't remember this, I was a baby. This is according to my mother. She said that he, she would be holding me when they, you know, were like literally from day one that they took me home from the hospital. She would be holding me and cuddling me and like rocking me and stuff. And my dad would just walk in the room and scream my name. But he would scream that from the like door or whatever and startle me and make me cry. And my mom would be like, what the fuck? why are you doing this? And his answer was he wanted me to be afraid of him from day one. The intention was to make me afraid of him. So when I sit here and I'm feeling like you ain't shit mine, I feel like I'm parroting him, but I can't get him out of my head. I mean, I'm like 800 miles away from him and I haven't seen him in three and a half years. And even before that, we had an extreme, a pretty strained relationship. He has no influence over my life anymore, like directly. I still can't get him out of my head. I can't separate my voice from his. I've internalized it all that much, even with all the fucking therapy. My biggest fear is being him. And I won't go into the details of how I've already made evident that I can be like him and I am like him in the bad ways. I don't really want to go into details of how I know that. <laughs> how do I stop being him if I can't get him out of my head? He didn't start acting like even the most remote thing was good enough for him until I was like 17 where he started to recognize that like I got accepted to a college. But before that, you know, there's like 17 years before that, that I never felt like I was enough for him. Man, talking about this just starts connecting like all kinds of shit. And it's exhausting to think about. I feel like though that right there is the blockade I can't get past to be able to like target these traumas and stuff. Hi, Claire. Well, I did it. I did the task. <laughs> I felt the feelings. I don't know how much I'll put of this in the vlog, honestly, but this is really helpful because I can't do this very often with another person. It's so hard for me to crack in front of somebody. And like, this is almost tricking my brain because I'm not, in, I'm not physically in front of anybody. I'm physically by myself. You know, I've only told you one small story here, but I am afraid that putting this out to the public, which I know like it's a very small group of y'all that are watching these. And those of you who have been, have been immensely kind. And I'm so grateful for that. And I know that, but you know, there's the fear in the back of my head that somebody's going to pop in and my story is going to trigger them in, in a way where they're feeling like, oh my God, that's all you went through. Like da 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 da. I can't really handle these traumatic experiences for me being belittled. So I don't know how smart it is of me to put them out there. I guess I'm asking you, the viewer, not to do that for me because I would never do it to you because it fucking sucks. I'm aware and it's a mind f because for a long time, for a large portion of my adolescence, I didn't think I went through anything significantly bad. A couple things. I knew a couple things were messed up. Again, I didn't think they were really affecting me. I had like gaslit myself and been gaslit by other people into believing that like, yeah, no, I, I haven't seen bad. That was something my dad would say to me a lot too. It was like, you think I'm hard on you? You know, you think I'm mean to you? You have no idea. And I mean, he's not wrong because his dad was way worse to him. So it, yeah, I'm aware that people have been through worse, you know? You gotta deal with your own shit, which means you have to acknowledge it. Anyway, sorry, that was a ramble for some random person that isn't even in this group right now. I, I believe they haven't made themselves 
known yet anyway. So I'm sorry for those of you who have all been so freaking kind and supportive and sweet and understanding. I'm, I'm sorry to like preach at you there for a second. It, I just know it wasn't for you at all. It wasn't. I love y'all. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna try to finish my food now. I feel a little bit lighter. So I think this was a good exercise. Hi, so I have done an absolutely terrible job vlogging this week for two weeks because I missed last week's vlog and it's just, I've been really bad at it, you guys, to be honest with you. The clips that I've sat down and recorded thus far have been pretty disjointed, so I honestly, I haven't gone back and watched them. I started editing this vlog, so I, I don't remember what all was said, vaguely, but not everything. Basically, the last couple weeks have just been very weird for me. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of going through some shit, to be honest, and I don't even really know how to describe it. A lot of things are coming up, a lot of things are happening. I'm trying to do new things, and I'm running into to roadblocks with that like internally mentally and stuff just wanted to make it clear that ultimately right now i am doing okay don't worry about me i know i've had some rough spots this last couple weeks so let me just pull it together and end it there i love you guys i hope you have a great rest of your week i hope you've had a good week so far and i'll see you in the next one Mwah. bye bye